Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, Dr. LaFanya Jones Hines, and Dr. Nichelle Wall. Now, don't get it twisted. We're not going to be your stereotypical therapist. What we will be is informative, down to earth, a little spicy, and vulnerable. All right, interns, turn up your volume, grab your pen and paper. It's supervision time. As a reminder, this podcast is not meant to take the place of a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Welcome back to Session 50, Black Box. Session 50. How about that, y'all? I know. Almost a year. Almost a year. Don't forget the live. Oh, yeah. It's coming up. The live is coming. So we'll be going live at 6 p.m. on June 30th. Central Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, So that we can do something a little bit different for y'all. You know, we wanted to celebrate our one year because that'll be officially one year of us doing the podcast. Uh, So for the interns that don't know us. We wanted to be able to, you know, give you a little show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> this is I and me and us. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. So y'all can put some faces with the names because there ain't nothing worse than you've been listening to somebody's voice for the longest. And you're like, I don't even know what they look like because uh, our pictures are so far down on the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, make sure that you um, tune in and that you join us. We will be going live on Facebook and instagram and then we will also upload um you know the video to youtube at some point so we want you know come join us it's gonna mm-hmm. be a, it's a party <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay but that's uh, not what we're here to talk about today okay interns today's session will be discussing toxic masculinity and toxic femininity okay so toxic masculinity is a set of attitudes and ways of behaving stereotypically associated with or expected of men. It is also thought of as having a negative impact on men and on society as a whole. And then toxic femininity occurs when women use society's feminine stereotypes to their advantage. So I think one thing we kind of want to get out of the way um, so that you know, everybody's kind of aware a lot of the things that you were going to hear today in this particular session are going to be a lot of stereotypes. So please know that we understand that this is not to, um, based on every single person that falls, that's either uh, male leaning or female leaning that, you know, everyone is an individual, but you know, when you kind of pull back again and look at some behaviors, there's some similarity um, between the genders, um, in these particular categories. So, but we want you to understand that we know that we are speaking stereotypically. Um, and it's the toxic part. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Uh, extreme. Yes. Yes. So the, of course, you know, when we say toxic masculinity and femininity, there's, there's only really a subset of people that really fall into this category. It's not every single person on the planet. So just kind of asterisk disclaimer out there for y'all. Mm-hmm. I do want to say this before we jump into it, just so y'all don't feel like we're man bashing because we're women or being hard on like these terms that we're going to be discussing have been around really since the 80s and 90s during a, a men's movement that was happening around that time. So this is not something that we're just coming up with or, you know, the catchphrase of the year or anything like that. This has been around for some decades at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we all know that boys and girls are raised differently one boys are raised to play with soldiers with little guns and play games that have fighting and aggression in it Mm -hmm. and girls play with barbie dolls and baby dolls so if you notice the difference in the toys girls are already right being raised to play with things that have emotions crying and Mm-hmm. feels but boys are raised to play with toys that are violent and aggressive mm-hmm. and uh 
absent of having emotions. Mm -hmm. And so, which we already recognize that that's a problem in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why do y'all think it's a problem? It's not allowing either of the two to be a well-rounded person. At the end of the day, yes, it is providing strategy on both parts, you know, being, um, someone who's taking care of baby dolls and cooking, you're having to problem solve. Like, how do I do these things? And when do I do this? How do I do this? You have to have a, (laughs) you know, imagination just as, um, you know, the young boys may have to, you know, figure out, you know, battle plans and different things like that. And how are we going to storm the Capitol? No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't catch myself before it came out my mouth. Um, but, you know, it, it's um, it's saying that only one gender can have this particular set of norms and then this gender can only have this other set when in actuality the gender has nothing to do with the capability of doing these things and especially not at two three four five Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm glad you stopped at five because they say that um from birth to around four boys are more emotional than girls but then at four, from like four to six, it stops. Or in well, four on up, it kind of stops. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, because that's when you go to school for the most part. Now, this isn't if you go to daycare, you know, you have all these other kind of things. But um, that's when kids are in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're around other adults. Mm-hmm. They're around other children. And now they are being taught norms and expectations based off the people that they're around throughout the the day um and the expectations for behavior change at that point mm-hmm. you know when you're two three four you know you can run around and scream and jump and holler and play and nobody really thinks too much of it mm-hmm. but once you start kindergarten you know all of a sudden we halt behavior and we expect you to sit in your chair be quiet and listen to the teacher yeah Mm-mm. So, yeah, you're going to start getting some stunted, you know, issues. It's just it's mind boggling to me, the lack of emotional intelligence and the way that certain norms and belief are just perpetuated without thinking about what damage it is doing to the next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there. It's important for a man to know how to cook because he needs to know how to cook and feed himself Mm -hmm. for survival (laughs) like yeah you know Mm -hmm. um it's important for a a girl to know how to change a tire change her oil yes Mm -hmm. like these things are not gender specific if you have a car that's what you should do to it you know or at least Mm -hmm. know where to take it yeah yes you know one of the things kind of that i was when i was researching that they were talking about um is is there some benefit to, well, let me back up. They were talking about two things. One, that the idea of toxic masculinity and or toxic femininity um, is kind of like a misnomer of sorts Mm -hmm. because um, masculine, there's nothing necessarily inherently wrong with Mm -hmm. masculinity Mm -hmm. and there's nothing inherently wrong with femininity Mm -hmm. and that those qualities there is um, like we need to kind of have those categories. Mm -hmm. We need Um, a balance. Yes. That you need both of those energies. um, Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. you need both of those energies, but, um, but we've attributed more negativity um towards masculinity and not necessarily Mm -hmm. as much negativity towards femininity and that Mm -hmm. we have kind of rebounded because of the idea of toxic masculinity that um we're now feminizing uh men Mm mm-hmm because of the idea that we're well they're so you know if you look at a woman wrong then you're this you know over sexed you know, mm-hmm. yeah, gorilla that's coming to like, you know, pound on this poor, sweet, you know, young Jane, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> in the forest or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but because we've kind of gone so far into that land of toxic masculinity that we're not teaching 
boys how to okay now again we're talking about stereotypically you know we're, we're talking about cisgender mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. men um but we're not teaching boys about how to be boys mm-hmm. we're teaching boys how to be um appropriate for girls yeah you know even something to piggyback on that is even when i'm talking to my transgender clients we have to discuss this Mm -hmm. because the ideals of masculinity and femininity are already skewed Mm -hmm. and then you are choosing to go into this other realm with these skewed views and you have to unpack that before you take a leap into that and you have to unpack the ones that you're leaving as well Mm -hmm. so even though yes we are talking about stereotypically cisgendered individuals but this goes across all Mm -hmm. well and and the thing about trans is that when they trans into the men um they notice the difference very quick that you know now they get a lot of respect where you know they when they talk when they speak Mm -hmm. like people be quiet Mm -hmm. and listen Mm -hmm. as opposed to the opposite Mm -hmm. not necessarily we got to yell and scream and you know all of that stuff before we get anybody attention and then oh we just that too and you know over sexualize ourselves um (laughs) but and then someone will listen you know but they have to essentially learn how to be a man and I I do remember having and I think I got this idea from you Dr. Wall one time when I was working with a trans client and you were like okay so they need to learn what it means to be a man mm-hmm. but but the thing about that is who do you ask mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because a lot of men don't know the answer to that mm-hmm. question mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to check your own ideals of that when I work with my clients that are in that population and if they don't have good examples i tell them okay go find your favorite family on tv or go find your favorite uh, male figure on tv what parts of that individual did you like what parts did you dislike because you are deciding you know who you want to be and that's not just for trans people that's for anybody that Mm -hmm. you know you have to sit down and think about what actually works for me what doesn't work for me i feel like you know, y'all know that I'm a a pretty traditional person when it comes to certain things in a relationship. But the reality is I'm a business owner and I'm a working woman. And so certain things are not going to line up for me to be the Stepford wife. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen. It ain't ain't going to work out well. We're going to be hungry. (laughs) Right. You know, (laughs) so there has to be some understanding of like who you actually are and how you're going to present yourself as. And that's based off of you, no one else. Absolutely. So how do you guys think this typically shows up? So if we were going to talk about, you know, since we're, you know, discussing toxic masculinity Mm -hmm. and femininity, how do you guys see this showing up kind of on a between the sexes or just kind of as individuals? I'll say on the masculinity side, it shows up in relationships as obviously unhealthy because you, when you are, in this toxic masculinity, I guess, role, your men are typically stoic. And it's obviously a problem for women because we are emoters. We are usually intact with our emotions. Mm -hmm. And if you are dating or married to an individual who is stoic, that's a problem Mm -hmm. because now it seems like either you don't care or you objectifying me or you're domestic violence Mm -hmm. you know something and and so it shows up like that and as it it affects the relationships Mm -hmm. from the emotional side so i know we have other areas you Mm -hmm. know something that i learned from dr viviana coles and she is the founder of the national uh texas sex therapy institute um and she's also one of the experts on married at first sight i did my sex therapy training under her and something that has always kind of resonated with me when we were talking about relationships is that there is sometimes a inability for men to emotionally express themselves but that does not mean that they are not emotional Mm -hmm. they just hide it versus we as women are taught to be emotional and to be emotionally expressive Mm -hmm. and that is cut off um in men like i'll give you something to cry about or 
mm-hmm. we don't cry, dry your tears. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. stuff is taught very young. Yeah. Man so up. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it makes you very incapable of processing normal emotions. Like you don't even know how to be happy. Yeah. They don't know how yeah. to be vulnerable. They don't. It, and I, honestly, a lot of them don't know how to, they don't know who they are to mm-hmm. be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the problems that comes and how this manifests in toxic masculinity when we're talking about being emotionally expressive is because for some reason, people equate being emotional with crying Mm -hmm. or weak. And Mm -hmm. they believe that you need to be like, there's not, there's not a a wealth of emotion. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, so... You, well, you're, you're, I'm not going to be crying all over the, because the first thing you t- ask a man, well, you're not emotional. Well, I'm not going to be crying all over the place. What do you mean? I'm not going to be, what you want? It's like, well, first of all, nobody said anything about crying. And mm-hmm. that is a reaction to your emotions. Yes. Right. And that's one, <laughs> like one aspect of being emotional, you know, mm-hmm. um, like when working with my male clients, one of the things that we kind of first start off with is let's teach you some emotional words other than happy, yes. sad, and angry. We and do. in connection to that, where do you feel it in your body? Yep. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't always, like you said, have to come out of your tear ducts. Right. You can <laughs> <laughs> you can feel something in the pit of your stomach. Yes. You can have a headache. Mm-hmm. You know. Absolutely. Y- Good feeling. That right. is an emotion attached to that, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important on the flip side of that. When we were talking about emotion is that we as women are taught to use our emotions as a weapon. Yes. yes. Let these big brown eyes start crying. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't do that because I take too much energy, but I'm just saying like there are a lot of women that weaponize their emotions and get the things that they want. Um, and cause you know, most people that are not able to process their emotions, why are they going to want to see them on the person that they're dealing with? Mm-hmm. Especially because <laughs> I've found that a lot of men, whether it's toxic or not, <laughs> They don't handle women's emotions well, and they definitely do not handle crying well. No. Mm -mm. But you know, there's so much uh, stigma associated with that. Um, And a lot of crying. With crying, Mm -hmm. just in general, um, to the point, like, we've talked about this in a past session. I don't remember which one it was, but like, the whole point of like phrases and names in our medical jargon are related to what men thought about women like a hysterectomy is because Mm -hmm. they felt that the ovaries and the uterus made women hysterical hysterical. Mm -hmm. and i'm like you do realize the emotion that i'm not the emotion the um what is it called the hormone is actually testosterone that makes people hysterical (laughs) You know, I know (laughs) it's so funny that you're talking about testosterone because this was something that I was thinking about while I was doing this research, just kind of thinking about, um, I know we're not necessarily speaking on transgender individuals, Mm -hmm. but I was thinking about, you know, uh, transgendered men as they transition from female to male, Mm -hmm. like physically, what do they start to recognize? So I know you were talking about kind of how do they want to show up as being a man Mm -hmm. but there are legitimate physical differences between um being a biological man and being a biological Mm -hmm. woman and as you introduce these um hormones that you know although you have them your percentage of them is vastly different Mm -hmm. so now that you've introduced um, testosterone like physically what do you notice as a difference Mm -hmm. and how does that change also the way that you think Mm -hmm. I, i have found that if you if they do the correct work for themselves it's not going to be a whole bunch of mental changes if they are prepared gotcha now i'm gonna say that everybody's not prepared and some people just want the look Mm. now on the other end of that i um i tell them to be prepared for a second puberty because that's exactly what's about to happen you know changing of your skin types changing of body hair you know voice like everything that you can pretty much think of a lot of times happens in regular puberty is going to happen in second puberty Mm i understand that makes sense that makes yeah but i but when i was thinking about testosterone specifically Mm -hmm. with that as well i was thinking of kind of 
if you notice because the, the average person is never going to experience that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like um that's a, a specific subset mm-hmm. of individuals that will have that to be able to speak on that experience and then just to kind of piggyback on that once you've kind of reached whatever level you're going to have then what do you notice about your behavior mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's you know? a, there's more rage there's a lot more emotionality that is not um, able to handle. There's a lot of mood swings. For both? More so for um, transgender men. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You, I've seen with my transgender women that it's more weeping, like more teary uh, sort of thing because they're feeling things for the first time. <laughs> you ain't got no choice. Mm-hmm. Your testosterone ain't as high as it was. Um, but you get a lot of rage swings depression mm. um it depends like i said it's, it's not a one size fits all for anybody it just kind of depends mm-hmm. yeah but you know i think it kind of also it still ties to that kind of toxic mm-hmm. masculinity because yep. then i think it gives some credence to biology mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you've introduced testosterone to a you know genetic female mm-hmm and then now they're taking testosterone and you get more rage Mm -hmm. and you get more of that kind of um angry esque kind of mood swing Mm -hmm. that is there some biological component for you know uh, men that they are already just kind of more naturally physical yeah Mm -hmm. you know maybe not they're going to go and fight and punch people in the face because you, you know, because you took the last orange at the grocery store, but that there is some data to support that men are a little mm-hmm. bit more apt to go to the, well, it may be some truth to that because men are supposed to, um, boys are supposedly more rambunctious. And so that may be where the, all of that energy mm-hmm. goes instead of it being like you said, I'm just going to punch everything because you, yeah. you know, stole my orange, but it, the the um energy and is turned in a different direction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as is as, as opposed to it being aggressive yeah. yeah i think this is a good nature versus nurture thing mm-hmm. because yes they will have more of that but then you have the nurture component where they don't know how to deal with it mm-hmm. versus like when i have my transgender uh men they've already lived their life as women. Mm -hmm. And so there has been some understanding unless, you know, everybody's different. There can be some trauma or other things that have occurred, which stunted that, but just stereotypically they already kind of know, and they're already going to be coming to therapy Yeah, because women are more likely to come to therapy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So once they decide, okay, this is the life that I'm choosing to live and I want, I'm ready to transition and they transition into transgendered men, then they still have some of the core beliefs and things that they had before then. And so mm-hmm. therapy is not going to be a bad thing. Dealing with emotions is not going to be a bad thing. What then becomes the problem is presenting. Mm-hmm. okay which is a completely different mm, separate situation gotcha. yeah. yeah okay i know it was just something i know that's kind of we took y'all on a little bit of a tangent there but it was something that i was thinking about and how that kind of in um is incorporated yeah, into the science of it yeah, yeah behind and because again you have a subset of individuals that is only going to experience you know mm-hmm. this in a very unique kind of way um so I, I just thought it would be interesting um kind of dialogue yeah. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to, so I know we talked about relationships and how, um, a little bit how the, you know, the toxicity between masculinity and femininity kind of show up. So what do you guys see as the difficulty in communication between men and women when it comes to toxicity in femininity and masculinity? I think with women, we are trained that, and this is not necessarily correct, but we are trained that our significant other is supposed to be our friend and men tend to be very to the point, very, this is what it is. Now I'm not going to say everybody falls under that because that's not me either. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm just like, you're going to get these couple of words. This is what I need. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so it's not like we said, these are just stereotypical things, but I think the communication is taught to be more flowy, more nurturing, mm. more politically correct for uh, feminine individuals. And then with more masculine individuals, it's all about logic. It's all about what are the facts, um, get to the point. It's not flowery. No you flow. have to remember that, you know, men are, uh, statistically better at math. That's very to the point <laughs> <laughs> data. Yeah. Women we're statistically better at reading. So we have a lot of vocabulary and a lot of like, long <laughs> right mm-hmm. <laughs> and you, i think also it it goes to how society has trained women mm-hmm. as well because if we're straight to the point and you know just factual we're abrasive mm-hmm. we're bees yeah mm-hmm. with other letters behind mm-hmm. exactly it rhymes with itch <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know yes <laughs> but a man will be seen as assertive yes we're aggressive mm-hmm. and it's the same words and we're typically shorter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I forgot they can't see my head. Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would agree. What about, oh, that's what I'm going to say. Also, what I would you? agree with you guys. I definitely think it leads to a lot of miscommunication. Yes. Um, between the genders because of, you know, in part because of what both of you ladies have said, just how we communicate, you mm-hmm. know, kind of that low context versus high context. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I also think it leads to kind of like misperceptions. Mm-hmm. So what we start to believe about the other person yes. and and who they are because we just don't communicate in the same way. And, you know, partially because women are, you know, again, much more uh, verbose that I think sometimes men can get lost in what we're saying. Mm-hmm. So then that creates this perception mm-hmm. a, or a misperception on what we mean or what we want mm-hmm. um, because there's not clarity for them on what it is. Yeah. You know, I, I've i learned since being with my significant, my husband, I was going to say significant, not other. Mm-hmm. It's, but, new. it's new. I know. But I've learned since being with my husband that because when I, he's a manly man because he just is, but I've learned that (laughs) I, if whatever, if I want to know an emotion from him, I need to ask him like, okay, Mm -hmm. so how are you feeling about that? And so he'll still give me a thought. And so I'll say, okay, so you you feel unappreciated. And so he'll, yes, that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I, I've, so I've learned that, okay, if I want to get a feeling out of him, I may have to pay attention to his thoughts and I may have to ask him, okay, so is this what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Cause he, and sometimes he'll just tell me, but a lot of times, especially depending on the conversation or the topic, Mm -hmm. he may not. And so I'll have to fish kind of fish for it, but it's not, I don't think that is that he doesn't want to tell me. He may either one Mm -hmm. does not know the emotion or, He's just not comfortable telling me until yeah. I ask. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do think there's a tendency for men to think their feelings and women to feel their thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that, I think that's just kind of the way it goes. Can we run that back again? I believe <laughs> <laughs> that men tend to think their feelings and women tend to feel their thoughts. And so that would be, you know, what gets a lot of people in trouble. What I've noticed in therapy is that, men will see their significant other doing something and they'll be like, Oh, calm down. Or you need to do this or you need to, it's very direct, very, this, very, that. And the woman is looking like, but I'm not mad though. I don't, Mm -hmm. why are you telling me these things that I need to do? Mm -hmm. And versus women, we're like, well, I feel like, you know, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so both are just missing each other completely. It's not that either it's necessary right or wrong. It's more so needing to come closer to the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, the big thing for me with toxic femininity and toxic masculinity is that it is a very restrictive way to live. Mm-hmm. And um, it limits you in what you can be and what you can do. You have to, check these boxes and so the reality is that's just not possible for everybody you know 
it's yeah. just not gonna work out <laughs> i don't want to feel like the only way i'm able to get what i want is either through my tears or my sexual your woman yeah, yeah like mm-hmm. i don't want to do that no that's too much work and i gotta think i just want to be me yeah you know i think the fact that you brought up you know kind of sexual walls i i believe that when it comes to toxic femininity that is something that is overlooked mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm And if you speak on it, then you are, you know, kind of immediately, you know, shut down and called all kinds of, you know, whatever names that are associated with it. But people forget that when it comes to one of the ways that women can assert power and dominance, it is through sex. Mm -hmm. You know, again, this is stereotypical, but we are not physically as strong as men Mm -hmm. we are not generally as big as men Mm -hmm. uh so and just kind of the way you know things are changing but you know since the inception of human beings or homo sapiens Mm -hmm. you know we've kind of always been nurturers we've been the you know they've gone out and hunted and we've kind of stayed in uh, with the kids and done the you know kind of foraging yeah. type stuff mm-hmm. and we choose who we want to have babies with mm-hmm. are we supposed to technically choose who we have babies <laughs> right with? yeah and because as women uh we are not able to go or not at the time again this has changed but traditionally because we were not able to go out and build and create and you know make money as you know Mm -hmm. money became a thing so then we had to marry and seek partnership in people that had status Mm -hmm. because we were property Mm -hmm. right so the only way that i'm going to find a part a partner Mm -hmm. unless my parents are arranging this but the only way i'm going to seek and find a partner of status is i have to show something or do something that makes this person attracted to me so what is the one thing that i know that i can control is my box. Mm-hmm. Toot that thing up, mommy. I uh, see so you know you gotta, gotta okay. do things sometimes. <laughs> a lot I mean, <laughs> it's unfortunate and very sad, but there have been a lot of women on yeah. this planet that have done something strange for a piece of change. Yep. And I think it's um, you know, intellectually and emotionally <laughs> dishonest of us to pretend that mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't exist. That it does yeah, that women do not use at some point in time their sexuality to manipulate, to get what they want, to get out of a situation, yeah. um, to get ahead in a situation. Of course, we all know this is not all women, you know, mm-hmm. and I hate that we even have to put that disclaimer out there because mm-hmm. everybody knows that it's not all women. And it does not mean that anybody gets to tell that woman what to do with her body. Right. Because yes. we're not judging anybody. Mm-mm. We're just saying, you know, it's, this is just about, about truth. Yeah. It does happen. And the thing with, you know, again, that kind of weird intersection when it comes to toxic femininity is that we all know that this happens. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of those secret underbelly things. But if you find out that it happens, oh, how dare you? Yeah. Yeah. And and the Probably. thing about it is it's so un um imbalanced because you know, when men assert their aggression, and I'm not saying it's it's healthy because usually it's taken out on a woman most of the time. But that we have a problem. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. I understand why. But then when a woman does it, there's no no it's no conversation about it. It's it, it may somebody may say something and it, it's it's over. Like it, we don't bring the wrath down on her as we do the one, the man. Oh no. How dare if a woman, you can see a woman slapping a man, you know, jumping all over his back, mm-hmm. doing all kinds of things to him. And people are going to look, mm-hmm. you know, they might be like, Oh, she crazy. Well, he's <laughs> supposed to just be able to take it. Right? right. But I told my brothers long time ago, don't hit a woman. Just call me. <laughs> Because you not going to get in trouble. No. Mm-hmm. I handled that. <laughs> you know, but we don't think about, you know, domestically violent women. Mm-hmm. You know, when men call the police or, you know, ask for assistance, sometimes they're laughed at or, you Which know, so degraded. Like, you can't handle that. You know, all that kind of stuff. But and people we- forget, like, just because the strength may not be mer- be there does not mean the lethality. It's not there. Mm-hmm. Well, one, because 
again, we're generally not as physically um, Mm -hmm. strong as men. So if we're going to get you, we know (laughs) that. So we're going to use something. Right. We're either going to go for the low blow Mm -hmm. uh, or we're going to, like you said, we're going to use something to kind of compensate for what we don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, if the reverse and you see some dude pounding on a woman, everybody, everybody is coming for this dude. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I will put a disclaimer asterisk there. (laughs) We're not going to talk about that in this session. I will say that is true, almost with the exception if it's a black woman. I concur. I concur. And I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let me just say, I concur. And then exclamation. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to be talking about that next time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, if the reverse was happening, you know, people are going to, like you said, they're going to get all over this man. He's going to have, you know, problems with his career. Mm -hmm. You know, this could be life ending types of, you know, situations for them. But again, if a woman does it, um, because I'm thinking specifically kind of like Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, you know, there is video tape recording of her talking about, you know, beating him up i felt so bad for him Hmm. because he i love him as a a actor and the quirky roles that he always plays Mm -hmm. and he's he's there for the for the different type of people in the world that kind of get overlooked Mm -hmm. so when hearing that story about how she was so abusive and he's the one that lost the kids he's the one i Mm -hmm. mean stuff has been righted since then but initially oh i was like my heart just broke Mm mm-hmm but that happens all the time. All the time. So but when we then, talk about toxic, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but mm-mm. this is kind of the, when we talk about toxic femininity, you know, these are the types of things that kind of fall under that umbrella. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are certain tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A N C. H O R period F M. Mm-hmm. But then you have the flip side where we have. I'm trying to get ta- your words together. I'm trying to oh tailor it, tailor it, because <laughs> I need to make sure I say it, you know, professionally. <laughs> then we have people in high places with the highest position in the United States that you know can grab women. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yep. not be penalized and then Ooh. brag about. That was a good pun there. Penalized. <laughs> the penal code. <laughs> yes. We're not made for the vagina monologues. Okay. Uh, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. You know, and I think when we talk about toxic between the two, mm-hmm. I think that kind of goes into what we're not. And this is something we were talking about this morning mm-hmm. that we're not taught about consent. Yes. Mm. You know, that for both genders and both can be toxic when it comes to consent. Mm -hmm. And that starts at birth. That should be taught. If your kid don't want to get a hug from Auntie Sue or Uncle Bobo, that kid shouldn't have to go do that. That's not disrespect. That is that child having agency over their body and they don't want to be touched. Mm hmm. And even mm-hmm. if it's, they may not, just not want to be touched in that moment, it may not be anything unhealthy. They may just not feel like talking to nobody or touching nobody or having anybody touch them. Mm-hmm. Which is a okay. Yeah. So I think that again, when we talk about misperception that happens between the genders because of the things that we're taught, the unhealthy things that we're taught, because that's really what we mean. When we say toxic. Mm-hmm. I think that's an extreme version of this word mm-hmm. um, of this kind of uh, scenario. But when we're taught these unhealthy habits, it can lead to these types of misperceptions because we don't communicate clearly um, or have a clear understanding of what consent means. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was, we were talking this morning. I didn't realize that um, they didn't make it illegal for, I guess, marriage rape 
Oh, that's recent. They didn't. Yeah, they made it legal in 1970. I was like, wait, what? But that's not even all the states. Wow. Yeah. Some places that still can happen. Um, I think kind of like we were saying in the last session, you know, rights are fairly new. Like mm-hmm. there was a whole mm-hmm. women's yeah. suffrage march yeah. in 1913. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like we barely a little over a hundred years about yeah. to be 110 years. Like that was just the other day. Well, when you think about time, yeah. Yeah. You know, this yeah. planet is old, even though we only recognize 2013 years of it for some strange reason, but I mean, 13, 2021 years of it for some strange reason. Like this planet is really old and for things to billions just, with a B, b- yes. b- b- billions. Um, the, and the reality is a lot of these constructs are very new. Like femininity mm-hmm. was coined in 1380. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't nobody checking for all of that back then. They were just like, you a human being. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got legs and arms. Let's roll. Mm-hmm. But you know, power. That's, I mean, at the basic level of all this, this is a power dynamic mm-hmm. of domination and submission. Yeah. And both positions are powerful. Like if you ever talk to somebody that's in the BDSM world, you know how powerful a submissive actually is and you know how powerful a dominant is Mm -hmm. and both are necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's yin and yang. You know what I'm saying? Like the balance. Yeah. You have to have masculine energy and you have to have feminine energy. You know, both of them, it keeps the other from, um, you know, getting out of control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, out of whack. Yeah. Because if it's all of one, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, doing the most. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I couldn't even think of a world that where it's all feminine or it's all. Oh, I don't even want to think about what that would look like. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I don't think that that would be possible anyway. Like even in societies who have been um, matriarchal and only the women live together, there was still mm-hmm. a balance of masculine and feminine energy in each one of them, and they still hired out to mm-hmm. make sure that them babies came. Mm-hmm. Um, from the from a local tribe and then they gone and went through the man <laughs> in the trash after that and then went on about their business mm-hmm. but there still was a balance of that and we we see it more so from the standpoint of living in a patriarchal society because that's what we have here but it's the same thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. we need each other yeah i mean it's just that's why when again when people say make that statement of i don't need nobody yeah you do oh yeah we just need each other in healthier ways yeah mm-hmm. i mean because we need both genders we need well whatever your preference is plus yeah. the other the <laughs> energies the mm-hmm. feminine and masculine yeah. yeah yeah you know i think when you when uh what is it called toxic masculinity and femininity pop up in my head when you look at it from a standpoint of it being toxic it's it's forcing us to be enemies instead of each other's ally absolutely oh, yeah. or accomplice as mm-hmm. I like to use, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Um, you like, that's not your partner in crime. It's like, I'm against you. And the reality is when you choose to do a relationship, whether it be platonic all the way up to your twin flame or whatever, um, you still have to like compromise. You still have to be on each other's team. Like this is not a situation of friendly fire. No, we're on the same team. Mm-hmm. Put your weapon down. Let's let's make this work and let's figure out what this needs to look like for us in all relationships. And for some reason, we just haven't gotten as a collective to that point. Mm-mm. Well, no, you know, because it, I think that kind of, you know, speaking for American society, let me kind of put that out there. Um, I think we are not great at the middle we are great at going to the extremes yeah you know so we've talked about toxic uh, masculinity and femininity but you know if we're not going to have toxic masculinity then we're going to you know feminize men and if we're not going to have toxic femininity then you need to be a little bit more um i almost want to say you need to be more feminine Mm -hmm. um because you know we don't like masculine women so you need to be more feminine um, versus come to the middle and figure out how you can incorporate some masculine um, yeah. energy and tendencies into into your femininity. Mm-hmm. We just 
take that and just go even more yeah. extreme. Yeah, what I've been seeing on a lot of social media platforms is there was this big surge of women and men speaking out on toxic masculinity and a little bit on toxic femininity. And immediately what you saw following that is those individuals that felt hurt Mm -hmm. talking about, we're not going to be feminine men. We're not going to do this. And I was like, it's the whole temporary of it all. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, Yes. I was like, nobody is telling you to swing the pendulum all the way to the other end. They're mm-hmm. telling you that these specific traits that you are choosing to participate in mm-hmm. are not healthy. Yeah. It's almost like in these talks, it reminds me of if you were having this conversation with an addict. Mm-hmm. I can quit any time. Yes. I don't have a problem. This is not a problem. I do this recreationally. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> okay Stop it, if, if that's if that's what you think okay but it, then the it's the digging in of the heels and that cognitive dissonance sets in and it's like oh you can't change my mind because this is the only way to be this is the right way mm-hmm. again it's about extremes yeah. you know we're not great at the gray area because <laughs> the gray is so ambiguous and you don't know how to operate in it and it's like well there's no real rules in there like what do you mean like balance out both of them I don't understand yeah it's too much work (laughs) right I think you know I think that's a reflection of how unhealthy society has made both and Mm -hmm. lazy Mm -hmm. yes because if if we're like you said on those two extremes and there's nothing in the middle Like that's some black and white thinking for your tail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate, but we just don't do a good job. I mean, if we're going to just boil it down (laughs) and we're speaking about American society, of course, because every culture is a little bit different, but we just don't do a good job of explaining to young children what feminine because first of all, we still use man and woman, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and we don't go with feminine and masculine and take away the the gender piece mm-hmm. of it. Because, again, we both have both. Mm-hmm. So I'll I, take your man card. How? You know, when you really think about it, <laughs> yeah. where are you getting it from? First of all, you went in me and took it like, but, like, <laughs> but where's, what's the card though? Where's yeah. my card? I, I, you know, and how do you tally it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, is there certain points that I need to get on here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's odd. And it's not until you really do a deep dive into these topics that you're like, oh i need to work on that oh let mm-hmm. me fix that let me do this let me do mm-hmm. that now of course there's still going to be things that you prefer like there's nothing wrong if you are a more traditional individual you want a man leading a household and a you know a woman being in a more submissive role you can choose whatever you want to choose like yeah. we said mm-hmm. we're talking about the extremes of those like if i have to go and talk to my man about what I put on my body and we're not in a traditional BDSM type relationship. Mm -hmm. There's some problems going on. There's some control that's not healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Society has ruined us. Ruined. (laughs) Ruined. (laughs) Ruined. What was y'all's first encounter with toxic masculinity and femininity like what do you recall like mm. I, myself yourself Ooh. um uh the f- one that comes off the dome <laughs> is for masculinity um so and i don't know if this was a cultural thing but <laughs> i'm just gonna go with it so um for those that don't know i was a military brat mm-hmm. and we lived overseas for quite a while and we were uh so this was also, you know, some German boys. Mm. So th- that's why I say, I don't know if this was cultural as well, but they were boys. So I was about mm, 11, maybe 11. And um, we were at this pool, at this indoor pool. Um, I can't remember if it was a school trip or I went with my parents that part, I don't remember. But I remember being at this pool and going, you know how you, you have to go up the slides and you have mm-hmm. to climb like these long ladders or whatnot. And I'm standing in line and these two boys start slapping me on the butt. Mm. I know 
Oh, you lying. Yeah. Now, mind you, I'm like 11. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't remember how old these boys were, if they were similarly aged or if they were teenagers. But, like, they're both just slapping me on the butt. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's telling them to stop. Like, I'm just. So, you just being sexually assaulted yep. at 11. At 11. Wow. Nobody said it. Nobody. Because, you in know, I'm just standing country. in line. In a foreign country. I'm just standing in line by myself you know, waiting to go, go up on the slide. I'm telling them to stop, but like nobody else around me is saying anything. Wow. They would have lost some boys. Mm-hmm. They got kicked down. Yeah. And I told you, you back then I was very <laughs> yes. sensitive mm-hmm. and timid. So of course I'm not going to, mm-hmm. not going to do nothing. Not going to do nothing. So, you know, I'm just standing there and they're just going to town. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's my first encounter that I can off the dome recall for masculinity, mm-hmm. femininity. Mm. So why are you thinking? Mm-hmm. I think my experience, because I'm the only girl, I have two <laughs> brothers. And so I don't know if this was just, you know, my parents just teaching me to be a lady because nothing is open past 12 but legs. So <laughs> mm, <laughs> that's it right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's so country. Uh-huh. Huh? <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, you know, in high school, my curfew is 12 o'clock. I got a, so I'm t- my, my younger brother and I are 10 years apart. So let's see, I was 16. So he was six, maybe. You know, he goes bowl- bowling with my older brother and they out until two and three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, where is the, where, where is the fairness in that, daddy? Because mm. so, you the one got to carry the baby. That's ex- that's why I said, I don't know if they was just trying to teach me that ain't nothing open past 12 but legs. Yeah. And I'm the girl. Mm. Mm. So I think there was both masculinity and femininity. I can see that. Gotcha, gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Ooh, I'm trying. That hard one is my first encounter with toxic femininity. So what I'll say is my first encounter with toxic femininity, um, and this probably also has something to do with being black, was in elementary. I, I've always been pretty soft-spoken especially around people I don't know. I, I don't like y'all. I don't know you. Um, so <laughs> um, I, and, and they can attest to this. I typically have a pretty blank face unless I'm being engaged and I need to know that you're talking to me or I just have a blank face. And so in elementary, my first encounter with um, the opposite sex was you should smile more because you'll be more pretty. Mm. pretty girls smile and I was like what because I'm oblivious I'm really I'm green at this point I'm like well just like me like I'm I'm that type of person I'm a very I was very just loving and I was just like I'm just here Mm -hmm. when are we gonna go recess so I can read a book (laughs) like this I'm not thinking about smiling. I'm thinking about the book I want to read. Yeah. Um, so that hurt. And, Mm -hmm. and then we'll just say that continues as a black woman. You Mm -hmm. need to smile more. Why are you not smiling? Cause Mm. my face is resting. Yeah. It does. I don't need to use my muscles in my face all the time, but that's a whole nother topic. And then I would say, um, masculinity would probably be this didn't directly affect me but I used to get a lot of flack from like the boys in my neighborhood because I played with Hot Wheels Mm. but my my family allowed me to play with Hot Wheels, G.I. Joe, Barbies like I played with everything it wasn't like it had to be either or but the boys in the neighborhood they weren't having none of that Cause I had the collection, like I had the little slots that they sat in, and then oh wow, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure. I don't. I'm sure. Let me back up. I'm sure I experienced toxic femininity in childhood. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like there's a doubt on that, but I can't think of a um young one. Mm, mm, if I had to say. And I think this is kind of, I don't know if this is an older person to a younger person, Mm -hmm. but like you don't, you sit with your legs closed. Oh yeah. You know, that was something that, um, that was being in church. uh Uh-huh. And it make you want, I get 
if you have on a dress, I do get that because it's nothing shielding it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that was really even taught if you had pants on. Because mm-hmm. I remember being younger and my mom teaching me how to sit like lady. My mom is very big on etiquette. And mm-hmm. um, you would think she was a whole debutante and stuff. But <laughs> she just really, she gets a kick off of that. Like how to set a table and like mm-hmm. how to eat properly. Your All your forks and knives. Like she's she loves that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I remember that lesson mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because like I don't remember that coming from like a specific person. Mm-hmm. Like I remember hearing that just from various, ooh, excuse me, guys, uh, various older women. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But and same thing. Like if you're wearing shorts, pants, um, anything, anything, mm-hmm. it didn't like, matter. Dudes got more stuff that's gonna pop out than we do. I know. Okay. We don't have anything that's gonna pop out mm-hmm. <laughs> unless we close real tight. It's hump day. (laughs) I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sex therapist. I can't help myself. I love it. Uh, But I would have to say, if I had to kind of, again, it's not attributed to one specific person. It's just something that I definitely know that I heard as a Mm -hmm. child growing up. Okay. Okay. So I got got another question. Mm -hmm. How has either... It doesn't have to be both. How have either of those things affected you in your current relationships? <laughs> well, it hasn't affected, well, my situation hasn't affected me in my current relationships. But when I was dating or relationship, when I was dating, I wouldn't let men come off to my apartment or wherever I was living after 12. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. Cause like I said, uh huh. Cause like I said, try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gallop, gallop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you weren't already there, you, you wasn't coming. coming. <laughs> mm-hmm. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> Sex therapist be killing me. She struck again, guys. <laughs> Y'all, I'm like this every day. I be getting on. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'd be ready for these kind of talks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be waiting for the professional hat to come on. Uh, uh, let me see my current relationship. So I will definitely say this has gotten better over the years because my husband and I have been together for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say one of the things is uh, him making decisions without checking in with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, this has gotten better. Uh, but I think that that because of kind of what he believes about Mm. men and kind of like how you were saying, you know, um, like my husband is a, he's a dude. (laughs) Like there ain't nothing Mm -hmm. feminine about my husband at all. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I can truly say we married some manly men. Yeah. So um, I think some of that, you know, his, belief that he needs to control things Mm. um and dominate a situation uh you know early on um in our marriage and in our our relationship you know caused a lot Mm. of tension and friction between us Mm -hmm. um and that's something that we've had to seriously like really work on um consistently throughout because even now it'll sign up you know sprinkling kind of rear its head every now and then but I would say th- I, that's kind of how toxic masculinity showed up in our. Um, and then if I had to kind of for myself, how m- maybe uh, femininity um, may have shown up. Um, I would definitely say that there have been times where I have used. Oh, this might sound really bad. <laughs> um, so that I've used words to get around him. Mm. Gotcha. I got you. Um, Mm -hmm. so because I, I knew that I could, Mm -hmm. um, which may have been gaslighting or, um, breadcrumbing, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So if I was going to be honest about it, I would definitely say that I may have over the years, you know, use words mm-hmm. to get around him and that is one way that we are trained as women because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they'll tell you that the man may run the family unit 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's really the woman. Mm-hmm. But the woman runs the show. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I will definitely say that I have used backdoor. Mm. So that means that's probably more what it is. Mm-hmm. While my husband has been definitely much more, f- he's much more visual. He is a, a visual, he's a doer. But I feel like there have been, uh, and this is something that I have worked on, mm-hmm. but what I have done is much more insidious mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of flies under the radar in the background. Yeah. Um, you don't know what's happening to you. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a trait that can be taught and encouraged mm-hmm. uh, in women. You yeah. think of like uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. mm you know, geishas, gay. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know that, what I'm saying? the art mm-hmm. of being a geisha. That yeah. is a mm-hmm. tactic that is yeah. used. Gr- watch that movie, y'all. Yes. And, or we might need to review it because that oh, is a bomb movie. It is you know, actually with so it many is. layers. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think that is a, a a skill that is taught and encouraged to women. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you've been called out on it, and you also recognize it, then of course you know you got to do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um since I'm the unmarried one uh what I will say is for myself I have experienced um and I'll say it's really only one person that I've dated because I tend to date metrosexual men because I like someone who can be real hard but they also can be real take feminine too like I need I need a combination I don't need you mm-hmm. who you talking to like that I don't need that rah-rah because we're gonna be rah rah together mm-hmm. and I'm soft sometimes uh, <laughs> but I've had someone who's been in and out of my life for a long time and he was always very much men don't do that women mm-hmm. do this women shouldn't do that um all that crying stuff is for girls like he was very mm-hmm. toxic in his masculinity and I was like, yeah, you saying that, but that ain't what you do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I've experienced that. And I will say with me, I have played the two feminine woman, mm. the very submissive, almost like gotcha. bowed over, like whatever, whatever you like. I've, I've been her. Gotcha. Mm. And mm-hmm. so that is. Now, like I said, if you you're into that and you're in a traditional BDSM type of relationship, you're you have chosen a dominant who is going to take very good care of you. Unfortunately, I did not choose a dominant that mm-hmm. was going to take very good care of me. I chose somebody who was the person I was just talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so that became in, increasingly um, emotionally abusive, increasingly. Um, financial manipulation like all that kind of stuff and so you really have to kind of be on top of that and choose wisely someone who will give those things to you that you desire from a place of love and not from a place of control and manipulation Mm -hmm. yeah I I would have to say for my marriage like I mean we haven't been married that long so (laughs) I mean we've been in we've been in a relationship but we haven't married that long so I would have to say in my current relationship, I haven't seen any toxicity yet. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously we have our conflicts, but I don't think they're toxic mm-hmm. and at least not yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I can't really, I'm trying to think of in something. So thing, maybe not necessarily that what you're doing is toxic, mm-hmm. but that it comes from something that you were taught. Mm-hmm. that was unhealthy because mm-hmm. that could be his emotion thing that you said earlier mm-hmm. yeah that he hasn't uh he identifying a feeling mm-hmm. so it's not so that's what i'm saying like i don't like that is it could be something but i don't know if that's toxic masculinity or mm-hmm. if it's just something he hasn't learned which technically can be two sides of the same same coin coin. yeah one can be to the point of like hurting you i mean they both can technically hurt Mm -hmm, you but mm -hmm. to the point of like i'm digging my heels in and hurting you versus 
dang, I was taught this and I, that, that ain't right. Let me, let me work on that. Kind of like what Dr. Strickland was saying about, okay, once this is brought up, like we, we have to work on it and we got to get better because now we know to do better. Mm-hmm. Now we have talked about that part of it and him doing better and he does better. And I'm so let me think, what, what about me? I think, <laughs> I think mine is probably my temperament. <laughs> how so because y'all know i am fly with this mouth <laughs> and i will get it get it and i'll give it to you and so i think mm. uh now i will say since dating him at least well i would say with everybody actually um but definitely with him i have changed my style of communication with him is not as abrasive, which is probably mm-hmm. why y'all, I think on another session was saying that I'm more loving mm-hmm. now. Um, I definitely see that being better. Um, mm-hmm. And it's something that I did mm-hmm. have to, because he, he's not one of those type of men that if you tell him that he's yeah. doing, that I don't like something, he going to change it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, so I don't have to he like. Because dating you. <laughs> he married to you. Right. You know, yeah. it's common sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You're not dating your dudes. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So it's, and, and that's the thing, like I had to, so I had to soften up mm-hmm. because he didn't require the wow, dominant, wow. yeah, the dominant personality that I have mm-hmm. or could have anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. He mm-hmm. allowed you to be soft. He yeah. held space for you. Yep. Cause I think as black women that that's a whole nother topic we're going to get into another time. We don't always have permission to be soft and vulnerable. And he and I had mm-hmm. that conversation too, because when we, while we were dating, um, I had, you know, I had to inform him like all this time I've been single. I've had to fight for myself mm-hmm. as a black woman. We always have to, we always feel like we have to fight for ourselves because we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was telling him then that like, I need someone who's going to allow me space to be feminine, to be mm-hmm. me, to mm-hmm. be something different. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay, don't it feel good girl? Mm-hmm. It does. <laughs> it does. Come on, babe. Write my bosom. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah. Ma'am. Mm-mm-mm. All this toxicity. No me gusta. <laughs> well, anything else we? I think that's it, you know, other than if the interns, you know, have questions that they, you know, never leave in the comments, but that's not the point. Um, Help <laughs> the <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> Comment, like, and share. And subscribe to the YouTube hit that notification bell so that you get all the notifications when we upload the recycle podcast ASMR <laughs> <laughs> alright so you guys know we always end off with a quote this one we brought to you by Dr. Jones Hines alright so this quote is by Patty Smith as far as I'm concerned being any gender is a drag So, okay, interns, process your notes. Be sure to catch us next session and find us on all major platforms at The Recycled Podcast. If you're a new intern, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. And remember, we are shifting and reshaping our psyche through healing conversations and connections, one discussion at a time.